Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Laskwitz, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use custom approvals. In Power Automate, we have all kinds of approvals. We can use the approve reject approvals. We can use them either for all responders or only the first one to respond, but we can also use custom approval or custom responses. So we can fill in our own responses instead of using the approve and reject options that Power Automate also offers. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna show you how you can do that both dynamically and statically. So let's just switch to my desktop and show you how it's been done. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and I have my first flow open already. I have a flow already created and it's a static custom approval. So when we open the manually trigger a flow trigger, and I really like this trigger because it's really easy to use in demo flows, for instance. So if you want to easily create a flow and start a really nice flow and also uh, be able to have really quick results, you really need to use the manually trigger a flow. Uh, so that you can really start uh, your flow development really fast. I have two inputs in this manually trigger or flow trigger. The first one is description, and that's for people to enter a description for their uh, budget request they're gonna do with this flow. Also, there's an amount input, and that amount input will give them an option, a drop-down list, and they can select 1,000, uh, two and a half thousand and five thousand. And I didn't add dollar, euros or whatever, but you can do that as well if you want. After that, we have a start and wait for an approval action. And in this case, we used the custom responses, wait for all responses. I added some items in here. So I added zero, one thousand, two and a half thousand and five thousand. So that's what the budget request um, is going to contain because the person who's requesting the budget request, uh, they can choose between a thousand, two and a half thousand and five thousand. But the people who are actually evaluating the budget request, they can also say, well, you're, you're not getting anything from me. So that's also something you can, you can see here. Below that, we can see that uh, we have a title here called budget request. It's assigned to my own email address. It also has some details in here. So it has the requested amount with the amount in there. And the amount is coming from the manually trigger a flow trigger. So you can really easily select that from the dynamic content. So if you are looking for the amount, you can just select the amount and then it will get added to your approval. And there's also a description with the description field from your trigger. If you want to make this really nice, you can use Markdown in here. And what Markdown is, it's kind of um, uh, a language where you can make sure that you uh, format this really nicely. So if you want to make this requested amount a little bit bigger, you can use one of the heading options and the heading options are done with a pound. So if you use that, and you will use that at description as well. You can see what I mean in a little bit because I'm gonna show you how this actually works. Uh, after the start and wait and approval action, we also have the send email action. And in this send email action, I will just create a really simple email with, uh, in the two, we have the user email from the person who triggered the trigger at the top of the flow. Uh, it has the budget request completed text in the subject. And after that, it also has in the body, you have requested budget. The outcome of the re budget request is, and then the outcome of the approval. So that's the flow that I have for now. So let's test this out and select test. I'm gonna perform the trigger action. I'm gonna save and test, and then you Normally when you run this for the first time, you have to uh, click allow to make sure that all the, um, all the connect connections are available in the flow, but I already did that. But 
uh, after you approve those connectors or connections, you can uh, see this same uh, form in here as I am seeing right now. So I would like budget for my project. And normally this would be a way longer description, of course, uh, but for now I'm just gonna request the amount of $5,000 because I always want the biggest amount, of course. And uh, when I select 5,000, I can run the flow. It's starting the flow. And when we click done, we can see that the manually trigger a flow action already has been, uh, been triggered. And now it's starting and waiting for an approval. So I think that the flow uh, already created an approval for me. So let's refresh the approvals page that I already had ready here. And you can see that I have a budget request. You can also see here in the details that we have the uh, pound sign here with the requested amount and the description as well. When I select this, you can see that the formatting came through here. Uh, and when I go to my email and I see the approval request, I can see that the formatting is also in here. So that's something you should pay attention to. Uh, it's both available in uh, the approval center or the action items part of the Power Automate website or in the email, but not in the details part, for instance. So now I get the approval in my uh, approval center. I can select zero, a thousand, two and a half thousand and five thousand. I can also reassign it to somebody else. You can of course disable that if you want. So if you don't want um, that to be in there, you can edit the flow. You can go to the start and wait for an approval action. You can select show advanced options and then you can disable the reassignment in here. So let's switch back to the approval here. And I'm going to select, um, I'm perfectly fine with 5,000 uh, euros in this case, and I'm going to click confirm so that I'm responding to the flow here. Okay. Um, and now when we go to the run, you can see that my flow has run. Um, it has started and waited for an approval. It has run successfully, it shows. Um, it recorded the response of 5,000. And of course, there's an email. And that email shows the outcome of the budget request as well. And when I go to my email, I can see that the budget request has been completed and that it was 5,000. So this is a really simple explanation of the custom responses here. Let's move back to the uh, to the flow and make it a little bit more difficult because in this case, it's perfectly fine to have it like this. But in most cases, when you do a budget request, it's not that simple with three different values. So maybe I want to change this around. Oh, I can't delete it because I use it later on in the flow. So let's remove the amount from here. And yeah, that's probably fine now. So let's delete this one, add an input and uh, put, uh, yeah, let's put a number here and call it amount. And of course, after this, I want an action Oh, let me just finish up this, by the way. Please enter an amount. I want to add an action, and this action is going to be a compose in this case, because I want to do a calculation on the amount, because I want to give the approvers the option to select 0% of the amount requested, 50% of the amount requested, or 100% of the amount requested. So how can we do that? We can, of course, use a compose in here. I'm always going to rename this first. So let's call this compose uh, 50% or just a percent. And let's do a calculation here. And that calculation, we can do that with an expression, of course. So in this case, I'm going to use the mole 
feature, and that's to multiply um, a number or a number with. So I can um, put in the amount in here. So let's move back to the dynamic content and you don't see it right now, but the dynamic content is in here as well. You can select amount in here. And of course I want to have, um, I want to have 50%. So I'm going to use 0 0.5 in this case, which is half of what the amount is going to be. So let's select OK. And now the outcome of this compose is going to be 50%, of course. And I want to, uh, I actually don't want any other action because we can put zero in there and we're going to put the amount in there as well. Um, if we look at the response options, we have multiple options in here. Uh, I'm going to delete one of those because we're not going to use that. We are going to use the response option item and we're going to use 50% in here. And of course, we're going to use the amount option here. And now you can see that we have three options here, zero, 50% of the amount and 100% of the amount. And now we can also put the amount in the details again. And I can uh, leave the rest like it is. So when I would now trigger this flow and I would fill in 100,000, it's going to change, of course, the options that I have in the approval. So let's test this and perform the trigger action. Select save and test. And hope that it loads. Yeah, I need uh, a lot of money for my project. So let's add the amount and call it 100,000 in this case. And let's run this flow and see what happens. So it's going to run through the compose in this case. And then it's going to start and wait for the approval. Let's see the compose first and see what uh, is the input and the output. Okay, so it's 50,000 in this case, so that's good. And if we look at the start and wait for an approval, we can't see that yet, but let's go to the approvals part in the Power Automate website and see what's in here. So let's See, we see requested amount is 100,000. The description is in here, of course, and I can see the responses in here. So I can do zero, 50,000 and 100,000 in this case. Uh, I want to assign 100,000 here and I want to say confirm. So then when I go to my approval, I can see that I just got the Outcome of the budget request is 100,000. So yeah, the flow has run successfully and you can see that everything worked as planned. So this is a really easy way to do something different than approve and reject. Um, and that's what I wanted to show you with this video. Um, this is also the end of the video. So thanks a lot for watching. And I hope you can like and subscribe. And if you have a subject you want me to cover in an upcoming video, please leave it in the comments below. And I hope to see you at a new video. Bye bye.